politics junkies of a certain era, the television show The West Wing was much wa must watch TV. The characters, plot lines, and intrigue often true to life, seemingly. 25 years later, yes, 25 cast members are planning to reunite tomorrow at the real West Wing, just down the street. Two of those cast members, Melissa Fitzgerald, who played Carol, and Mary McCormick, who was the Deputy National Security Advisor, Kate Harper, have come out with a tell-all book called What's Next. It's about the making of the show and its lasting legacy. Many cast members were inspired to go on to, to work in public service. In short, how life can imitate art. Now, we are thrilled today to have those two authors and actresses. Welcome to the show, Melissa and Mary, to Rising, to discuss the book, which we have right here. Thanks so much for being with us. Thanks we appreciate so it. Thank and you our for first in studio guest yes. the new, uh, on the new set. That's here. true. <laughs> yes. It's great Excellent. to have you both Beautiful here. set. Thank you. So, I, I actually watched The West Wing for the first time during the pandemic. Probably like a lot of people, I binged it beginning to end. So I actually didn't know, you know, I could vaguely recall when it had been on, but I was shocked by the end of the show that it had actually aired um, before the Obama-McCain election with the santos Vinick race, like, so closely mirroring what the dynamics of McCain and Obama would be. But like you guys predicted, it is wild. Um, <laughs> tell us a little bit about, you know, what inspired you to write the book and, and why you think people are still so obsessed with this show today. Well, we really, um, Melissa was approached to write a book by Kevin, <laughs> and Kevin's friends approached Melissa. Oh, this is all you're doing, huh? Yeah, I know. I got him into it. I got him into it. I don't know why I'm telling this. You should pages. tell this. <laughs> well, you Kevin two should tell this. Kevin's the godfather of this book, and yes. that we say it in the book. And uh, so, Kevin, you and I ran into each other at an event, and it was right before the 20th anniversary That's of right. the West Wing, which you knew and I didn't at the time. I remember. <laughs> and, and then you, t what did you say? You said you I called me. I said you've got to write it. I said you're the perfect person to write a book. You were on uh, every season. Um, CJ's assistant Carol on the show, um, and you you were so close to all of the. Uh, cast members, there's still a, a cast member text chain that goes on with everybody yep, really on it, close. united by yep. service and getting together. And I was like, you've got to write the book. And that was a conversation five years ago, and yeah. it finally came out in August, and it's a New York Times bestseller for the yeah. last four weeks. Yes, it is. We've been so lucky. And, and really, you know, Mary and I, when, when you first uh, approached me about doing a behind the scenes, you know, I, I thought it really has to have an element of service in it for me to want to do it. And then, of course, Mary and I have sort of been the two who have been together in service with the rest of the cast over the past, uh, well, over 20, 25 years. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh. <laughs> But when we really talked about writing the book together, it was at Alice and Janney's birthday party, November 2019. And um, you know, we thought if we can tell this story, the behind the scenes story, the, the story of the show, through the lens of service, which has been the connective tissue that has really deepened and strengthened our friendships over the years, that's something we could get behind. Yeah. And cut to five years later, here we are. are <laughs> well, we were overserved at Allison. <laughs> that's when you agree to write a book when you're not an author <laughs> or well, a writer. Yeah. That's what, right. what everybody right. wants to know is what is it like to walk and talk that fast at once? Yeah, that's not easy. <laughs> Melissa always says the best walk and talks are the ones I'm not in. Yeah. <laughs> the pressure. And you got to round corners <laughs> and hallways. Oh I imagine yeah, yeah. the set being built. Yeah, and there's a crew and a, a camera operator with a camera, which are they're not light, strapped mm -hmm. to their middle, and they're walking backwards, and people are pulling cables, and there's you know tons of background actors wiping the screen, crossing right. It's it's like doing a ballet. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it's really choreographed within an inch of its life, and. If you come in the end of the walk and talk and you have like one line and you mess it up, you just hear like over a hundred people on set <laughs> just go, oh, Did you back to one. It? It's yeah. one shot, so yeah. yeah. Well, you lived in fear because at the end of a lot of walk and talks involving CJ, you would have a line or two as she walked back into her office. A line. Well, <laughs> usually a line. But I, I got nervous. <laughs> like I got anxiety all in that walk yes. and talk chapter, just reading it. Yeah. What in? What into it? They're Let alone stressful. the different languages you had to learn to speak: yeah. Chinese, oh my God. Arabic. Every time I opened that script, I was like, "What? I don't even know where that country is." <laughs> it was all, I was really smart, and I'm not. So it was a lot <laughs> of learning. It was yes, a lot of are. learning. Well, that was also a fun part of the show. Is we really got to learn a lot about the real world and. Every single element of that show, every department, you know, top to bottom was so specific. Like, I think I tell this in the, we tell this in the book, but there was a scene that would never be on camera. They would never pick it up, but I was reading the budget, Carol at her desk, and I'm just looking at it, looking through. Camera never picks it up. 
It was the actual budget of the United States. And I, you know, because <laughs> the, the, the props team was so on top of it, they're like, no, she would be reading the actual budget. And so there it was. And that was in every area. Don't you agree? Mm, for sure. Yeah. You know, this was an era in American politics, obviously, before social media. Um, it was very, the show was very aspirational. It was very, uh, you know, something to, to inspire people that maybe hope the government is run this way. Um, I think a lot of people in this town joke that, uh, you know, we, they wish it was like the West Wing. It's actually like Veep, where everyone <laughs> right. is cynical and right. kind of personally despicable as well. Right. Um, right. You know, is, is that why people are still still turned to the West Wing? Probably part so of long? it. I mean, yeah. I think Aaron Sorkin's writing, that, that group of actors who are, you know, those actors are phenomenally talented. But, yeah, I think there's something that we all need, that we all want. I mean, I meet people every day who are like, I just watched it all again. <laughs> you know, I had to. You know, and it's like you can, re yeah. you can feel the tonic in it, you know, that it's like an antidote to, yeah. to that cynicism, right? And I think, you know, look, you all live here and work here, and I'm sure... I'm sure and we're very cynical. <laughs> you I'm are not. just. <laughs> She's not. Thank God. Oh, thank God. We need optimists. Yeah. yeah. No, we really do. And well, Kevin's very cheery. I'm, I'm cynical. Kevin is so Robbie. cheery. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Poor Robbie. <laughs> like, good morning, Robbie. He's like, oh God. It was raining yesterday. It's only Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that I'm cheery, but I am optimistic because mm -hmm. every single day I meet people who work in government who are in it for the right reasons and who are the best and the brightest and they've chosen to go into public service because they want to make our country and our world better mm -hmm. and that inspires me and gives me hope and I think that we can get to that West Wing place again where we are working together to solve big problems because we have to our survival depends mm -hmm. on it and I believe we're at a moment where that can actually happen and What's, I'm excited and, for that and you interview a number of those people yes in the we book. do you know, yeah you know, judge yep. mm -hmm. uh, Sarah McBride actually yes. who we saw Stacey uh, Abrams. yesterday Stacey yes. Abrams, Stacey Abrams. Um, oh. And boiled. And yeah. they're all wing nuts. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I love the story that you tell about uh, the time you met uh, Barack, then Senator Barack Obama, yeah. on a rope line, I think in New Mexico or Arizona. Albuquerque, oh, okay. New Mexico. I was doing a show there, and uh, the uh, soon to be president, he wasn't, it was days before he was elected, was coming off of a stage, rally stage. And my husband and I had gone, and I was like, oh, he's coming to this side, he's coming to this side, we're going to get to, we're going to get to shake his hand. I was so excited. And I was in line, and he, sh hands shaking, shaking, and he looked up and he went, oh, you're, you're, oh my God, you're, and I was like, I am not, I am <laughs> definitely, I know nothing about national security, but you're about to be the leader of the free world. So it's a pleasure to meet you, sir. And it was just crazy. My husband was there and he got the picture. So we actually have in the book, we Thank put it you, in Michael. the book. Yeah, we put a picture of the president going, and me going, yeah. Like that. It's really, I mean, he's a wingnut. He yeah. was watching, we learned later that night from his body man, Reggie Love, that he had been watching I forget what season, the, the Middle East episodes, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, in the car as he got out to walk onto the stage to speak. Wow. Like he was watching it on planes and in yeah. every single car ride. And yeah, he was a big wing. I mean, I'll say it again. I Googled it after I watched it. I could not believe that the season where Santos yeah. ran for president actually aired before what happened mm -hmm. in real life, which was which so closely resembled the dynamics of that race. Some incredible, we had a, Eli a number of incredible consultants who worked in politics, so they were in Lawrence the world. Donald. So yeah. it was prescient in yeah. some ways, but in other ways it was insider information, like, you know, experts. What's it like to portray characters who are, I think, so closely associated with, like, I, I feel this way about, um, you know, Ju Julie Louise Dreyfus when she yeah. is makes an appearance at the DNC or something, like, oh, it's Selena Meyer or um, or the people from Scandal, like, just so closely associate with their political characters. Now, you're all a little bit like that too, I think, right? What a gift! How lucky for us to <laughs> yeah. get to to be part of this show in the first place. But then also that legacy that we get to be a part of too. We feel so lucky and fortunate and. You know, it, it certainly helps us do the service work that we all do, too. And, you know, I moved here, as you know, about mm -hmm. 10 years ago. Oh, almost 11 almost, years. Yeah, almost, almost 10, 11, I think, yeah. yeah. It'll be 11 years in November to work for an organization that Martin Sheen got me involved mm -hmm. in called All Rise. And we advanced justice system reform for individuals impacted by substance use, mental health disorders, promoting treatment and recovery support instead of incarceration. And like Mary, Martin, everybody, Allison, everybody has been so incredibly supportive of that work and it's kept us together. And I think being associated with those characters in that show has really helped all of us elevate the issues and causes we care about. So we're mm -hmm. lucky. 
But. The amazing thing too is, I mean, 25 years on, we're still grappling. You know, at Robbie said in the intro, life Im imitating art. You know, we're still talking about peace in the Middle East and trying to. Absolutely. There's the the Kate Harper plan that yeah, has been Harper talked plan. about, right? Yeah. That right. you know but, that but you advocated and during the show. And all the issues. I mean, I think it's why a young generation is. My, I have three young women daughters, and they are all, and their friends are all finding the West Wing, and we meet young people all the time yeah. who are super into it, and I think it's because. A lot of the issues are still our issues. Gun control is still an issue. The environment is still an issue. So I think it it's, it holds up for young people. There was also something very different about that era of television. You know, now with yeah. streaming and everything, we yeah. consume so much of it all at once. And, and that's how I, again, how I saw The West Wing. I binged it over the pandemic. But there was a lot of, like, I was beginning to Lost at the time in 2040. Mm -hmm. You would tune in every week. Yeah. And then you would spend the week, you know, talking about it with your coworkers or your fellow students or whatever it is. A point um, of television. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And that has changed. And I would say maybe not for the Obviously, we have a lot of very quality shows now, but I do miss that era of having Letting to actually wait yeah. for the next. And was it, you know, it, the process of making it was probably different that way on a more expanded time period back then? Uh, well, we did 22, and now yeah. there's yeah. No, no one does 22. Yeah. Right, I know. So, yeah, there's so anymore. many episodes. Yeah. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah. That so feels for us, it was almost our whole year. Now, yeah. if you do a streaming series, you like might six or eight episodes. Three months, yeah. yeah. But also, I think, just in terms of creating a community around the show, yes. I think having it once a week and then the next morning thursday mornings people would you know talk around the water cooler i think that is missing a little bit now. yeah like watching stranger things is you know it's a two-week event right. where everybody watches it and then we move on to talk about something else right. or the crown or yeah, all, that, all know, of that all stuff. those different shows yeah also if you fall behind you can just i often like i watch the thing like a couple weeks later and then nobody right. wants to talk about it anymore I know. yeah exactly and weird. there's spoilers then too that yeah. are out there there's no spoilers back in the 1999 we when this sound little show old. We're like, oh, I know. <laughs> so Get what, out of my yard. Yeah. <laughs> so are there any any lessons we can learn from the themes of the West Wing to apply to our current politics, which are so, you know, divisive and oh, unpleasant? This and, is where you go to Melissa. All right. No, I think what I said before, I think yeah. about working together and you can you can disagree, but if the goal is to make our country better and stronger and to solve the problems that we need to solve. We don't have a choice. We have to solve these problems. And we need to work together. We need all the talent, all the intelligence to, to solve these huge problems. And the world is counting on us to do that. So we must. Mm. Well, thank you so much for joining us here at Rising. We really appreciate it. Well, thanks for having us. Great to Great. see you all, and congratulations on the book. Well, thanks, thanks for making for us making do it. Of course, of course. <laughs> sort of, yeah. <laughs> that that does it for us today on Rising. We'll be back tomorrow with the Friday edition of our show. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss any content. And for those of you who like to listen while on the go, we're available anywhere you can find podcasts. See you later.